What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Lagging Out. Are we on Google now? Mm -hmm. Everything you're watching, Lagging Out. I'm your host, Funny Guy, uh, here on Google, YouTube, and Twitch.tv. Uh, if you're new to the Lagging Out show, uh, we are the best podcast that you're currently not watching. There's a year's worth of notes right there. Look at that. Wow. You should yeah. <laughs> Put them on eBay or something. I'm your host, Funny Guy. I'm here with Chieftain, usually with Zombie Killer. She's out sick tonight. If you want to know more about mm. us after the show, be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash lagging out, youtube.com slash lagging out, follow us on Twitter at lagging out, or Instagram at lagging out show. Uh, this is our second to last show for the season, so we hope you enjoy it. Uh, yep. We are uh, actually a sponsored podcast, believe it or not. Uh, when it comes to the video game world, so uh, eat your hearts out. Other shows, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> don't sound too excited. Jeez. You sound yeah, like you're about to fall asleep. Listen, <laughs> listen, if uh, you want to play like the pros, go out and get yourself a pair of gamer gloves. Go to thegamergloves.com. Use the coupon code lagging out. That's L A G G I N O U T. And you'll save 15% on your next pair of gamer gloves. Yeah. Fu on posting it dot com. The only yeah, social Jeff, media out I'm aware. Don't need coaching live on the air. The only social media outlet where we can post whatever we want without censorship. Check out Fu on posting it dot com today. And uh, don't forget to <laughs> check out the Fierce Gaming Females. They support gamers on all platforms. Uh, go like their Facebook fan page at facebook dot com slash Fierce Gaming Females and join their group page. At the Fierce Gaming Females. I guess that's also on Facebook. Yes. Guys, hot chicks with sticks. They play games. They're real gamers, and they're good. Check them out. Fierce Gaming Females. Yep. I check them out all the time in a non-creepy way. Air quotes. <laughs> but I do have a really good rant that I want to do at our last show of the season, which will be in two weeks. Kind of like what scratches my... Like yeah, that, since, I, since we haven't had yeah. that segment, I guess we'll uh, we'll close it out with a little bit of a... I think that'll be good. I think that'll be yeah, good. be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in, in uh, reflection about us being all about everything nerd and geek and games and stuff, we haven't really talked about anything but video games all season, which was actually brought to us from yeah. one of our... Uh, you know, we talk, and, we talk to cosplayers and... Right, we right we've caught the cosplays and stuff, but we haven't really talked about like Agents of Shield or Gotham, like the new like new shows that are coming out. Yeah, I heard good things about Gotham, but I've not watched yeah. it yet. If you guys want to do want to listen to something about Gotham or are interested about that, you could check out Nerd Realm. Uh, they do a show every other every other week that we don't do the show. They're going to do a whole segment on that and Doctor Who. But we're not to step on Who? their toes too much. What? What? Who's on first? What's Who? On second? No, who's on first? What? What's on second? No, what's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. I'm I don't know who's, who's on third. On first. Yeah. <laughs> we got to practice that. <laughs> the greatest comedy sketch of all time, in my opinion. Uh, but, perhaps, yes. Yeah, perfect. I was listening to it the other day on YouTube, not to go on a tangent, but really good. All is amazing. But, uh... I so want to little things about. like that, like that, that do make us all things nerd. I mean, I'll yeah. be honest with you. I wonder if any of our viewers out there even know what we're talking about. Right. No <laughs> idea. It, it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, our, exactly. Our, our our engineer doesn't even know. <laughs> Welcome, Moab. Anyway, Moab Moab's on the show today. So that's me. That's a him, a Moab, a Moabiti. It's him. We call no, him a shaggy. I'm Moab. I'm the bomb. You gotta know this. I am Moab. <laughs> <laughs> Moab the bomb. <sighs> what are we gonna do with you, Moab? We give you a little bit of voice time, and this is what you do. Oh yeah, ruined it. <laughs> You're upstaging 
funny guy in myself. Well, <laughs> I'm busy reading over all the stuff that I'm going to f- read for uh, Zombie. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about one of my personal favorite shows that just started their fourth season, uh, Once Upon a Time. Once upon, if you guys don't know what puns, Once Upon a Time what is. What is it about? Well, tell I'll me. tell you. <laughs> Once Upon a Time is an American fairy tale drama series that premiered in October 23rd, 2011 on NBC. The show takes place in the fictional town of Storybrook, Maine, whose residents are actually characters from various fairy tales transported to the real world, uh, actually a real world town, and robbed of their memories by a powerful curse. Episodes usually feature a primary storyline from a character's current point of life and the underlying story from the past point. So they do a lot of flashbacks. The show is now in its fourth season and airs Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7, 7 p.m. East, uh, 8 p.m. East. Um, this is one of my favorite shows, and before I get started with this, Funny Guy had his own opinion on me watching the show and being a fan of it. Do you no, want it's a different show. Oh, it's a different show? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh no, it's a different show for sure. Okay. This yeah, is it's interesting. Is it set in modern day? It's it actually like, set um, yeah, it's it's set in like, modern day and it's in the time of hobbits and gnomes. <laughs> not not so much that, but they have a lot of the fairy tale characters that you all love. Uh Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, uh Elsa is actually featured in the first episode of the fourth season, and they're actually introducing this character in there, and she, they're not sure on uh, why she's there or what she's looking for, but they hint around for it during the show. It's an hour show, if you guys don't watch it, and they kind of put a twist on some of the fairy tales and that sort of thing. Um, they took, take a lot of creative license with stuff. Uh, I particularly enjoy it. I don't know if Moab's actually seen it. But I know Funny Guy hasn't. I so. just started watching it. I think I'm on episode five of the first season, and so far I love it. You love it. So what do you like about it? Well, what are your favorite things about it so far? The flashbacks really get me. I know a lot about fairy tales from when I was young. I had the book. Actually, the book that the kid has in the show, I had a copy of that. <laughs> you actually uh, had the copy of the book? I had a copy of that book. Nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I read that book front and back at least two or three times, and uh, seeing all those characters brought back into, like, modern times, they all get cursed. Uh, I think the only part is that book. The ending of his book is fake. Like, obviously, it never happened. It's to fill in for the TV show and, and explain why they're there. Um, but other than that, it's... Okay, well, I'm saying the whole book's not true. They're all fairy tales for a reason. Right, but right. The, the fact that they uh, added that, and it doesn't mess with their stories. Their stories are true. Um, right. The thing that throws me off. Sorry about this. Throws me off that they no, have. Uh, what? What's? I can't even think of his name. The main antagonist, not the witch, but Mr. Gold. Rumpel. Yeah, Mr. Gold. Yeah, Rumpelstiltskin. Like he shows up in all the fairy tales, and he just kind of becomes there. I I don't think he sees that funny guy. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he does either. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> uh, the Captain Morgan. Bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it's still there. Can you hear it's us? Still there. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> this is this is I, not the drunk cast that you can hear. Can you hear, hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah. No, he's just he's okay. just nervous. He's rocking back and forth. He's nervous. Yeah, he's he's scared. There we go. That's better. I'm oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that was awkward. So what you're saying, the main antagonist, Mr. Gold Rumpelstiltskin, what you're referring to is that getting back to what we were talking about. What are you saying about it? Oh, the fact that he's uh, he shows up in every fairy tale and during the show, and he let's see, one of the spoiler, minor spoiler, like in the the Glass Slipper, you know, the evil stepsisters. I can't remember the fairy tales the top of my head right now. I may have had a couple shots of that Captain Morgan earlier, but. Uh, <laughs> The Cinderella story is what you're referring to. Yeah, Cinderella. Okay. Basically, yeah, he shows up, does something, and ends up taking the wand from the fairy godmother and then granting the wish, whatever. But right. That, that never really happened. But it's cool that they implement that and make him one of the like you don't know what he's gonna do. Like so far, I've only seen up to episode five. Like right now, I don't know what what his purpose is being there, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. 
what it is is he's he's one of the main antagonists. Um, he's also referred to as the Croc because he has an alligator skin jacket. So he's the antagonist of Captain Hook, who in this interesting twist of the show is actually not really a bad guy. He's more like an anti-hero. So they kind of write Captain Hook as a more or less um, not so much an antagonist, but a reluctant hero in there. And when you go into Neverland, which is season three, I won't reveal a lot of stuff because you haven't seen it yet. But there's an interesting twist on Peter Pan and the Lost Boys and how it incorporates Captain Hook as well and Ashley Rumpelstiltskin's son. So there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of twists in it. It's a very interesting story and twist on fairy tales. And Funny Guy's giving me this funny ass look because he doesn't really have an opinion on it because he hasn't seen I'm, it. Yet. I'm lost already. I was trying to follow it. I'm, I'm I'm lost. I don't know what to tell you. I'm... We we just like that we just like to like to thank Funny Guy for being on the show. Good night, Funny Guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> We can't well, let I, don't, go. I don't watch a lot of TV, to be honest. So. You can, I think you can get the first few seasons on Netflix. I would suggest if you haven't seen the show, it's very popular, but some people haven't seen it. Um, I suggest you can you can go on Netflix. I know you got Netflix. You can watch the first two or three seasons now. It's on there. So I would watch it there. Even if it's just you, – you'd get into it. I didn't think I was going to get into it, but you'll get into it. I totally nerd out. But I never watch it on the actually allotted uh, 9 p.m. – Eastern slot. I always watch it on ABC.com. So and uh, and I just hook up my TV to my uh, HD TV, my laptop to my HD TV, and watch it like that. I was thought you just said you just hooked up your TV to another TV. Yeah, I hooked up to another TV. I gotta gotta watch it in stereo. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't actually seen Frozen. I'm probably one of the two people that haven't seen that movie. So I don't know her her whole background. I don't know she. What's that? So I'm I'm de- I'm two of two. Then yeah, you're, you're not alone on that one. <laughs> Which is really bad because one of my good friends actually worked on the film, and I haven't even watched it. But I don't have the heart to tell him I haven't seen it. But I don't think he'll, I don't think I'll hurt his feelings. So I go, I'll e- email him this video. And we'll be good to go. Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> What's that? I love that show. It's awesome. So it's a great show. Watching. And I notice all the princesses are no bigger than a B cup. It's just that's kind of weird to me. I don't, I don't know. I just noticed that just hey, being a guy. Hey, this isn't written by the Japanese, so you can't expect bigger than that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of games dropping, and Forza Horizon 2, the after action report. I didn't get, I didn't get the game, but I know that Zombie Killer did, and she has it on the one, and she has an interesting perspective that Funny Guy is going to read for us. So I just uh, dish it off to you, Funny Guy. Oh, wow, well, that that was a, it was an intro. It was an intro. It wasn't, it wasn't a good one. It was an I'll, intro. I'll, I'm not going to grade it tonight. It's okay. We're kind of we're flying a little loose tonight, kids. We're flying loose. Um, Kick basically, uh, this is about the uh, zombie killer wrote this. So this is uh, her perspective on Forza Horizon 2, which actually uh, I'll comment on after I uh, read this here for you. Forza uh, H2 is an amazing uh, racing experience uh, with both competitive online and uh, in story mode. Uh, car selection is superb, the landscapes are massive, and yes, you can drive anywhere on the map, so it's got some sandbox elements. While the Xbox One version of the game is stunning to look at, the 360 version is somewhat lacking, uh, understandably due to the fact that Turn 10 refused the same uh, to use the same game engine, I'm sorry, understandably due to the fact that Turn 10 reused the same game engine from the original Horizon, which the new one probably doesn't just work on a 360. Um, let's see here Uh, basically that that just kind of is bad news for the 360 uh, you know uh, Xbox owners Xbox 360 owners out there because according to Zombie Killer you're going to be missing out on uh, now I know this is in the game four new radio stations weather changes and road trips with friends between festival race locations Uh, these reasons alone make it a great time to be an Xbox One owner now the 360 version isn't horrible uh, but in terms of it's not as robust, it kind of dwarfs in comparison. Uh, well, no offense, it dwarfs everywhere. These are zombie killers. If you haven't got one yet, uh, if you haven't got a one yet, get a one, and when you do, get this game. Uh, i got to be honest with you. I want to get this game, and I'm going to wait till I have an Xbox One for it. Yeah, I, just, might, I might be there with you. the radio stations, the weather changes. I mean, that that's the kind of new stuff I want to see. That's something that sells an Xbox One to me. 
Right. <laughs> but plus, I, I love the whole real world, world on what you call the sandbox element. I love that. I love that whole aspect that you can, like, kind of cut shortcuts and like go on the grass or whatever, you know? Kind, kind of like that... Uh, well, no, you yeah, drive you from family. track to track, I guess. It's like a, you know, like a road map, I guess. Yeah, I, I like that. I think I'm actually going to get this when I get the one. And it looks it looks, it looks, looks visual, stu visually stunning. If you actually saw our last show with the gameplay in there, it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, this is a def definite must-have if you're an Xbox One. Really. Yeah, th there's like a whole bunch of games... But that's kind of surprising to me, Funny Guy, and not surprising to me in some aspects on how they used a different engine for the 360 and the One. Um, people are saying uh, the, the new Forza on the 360 looks like the old Forza. It just it looks like the same game. So that that's their opinion on it for these big Forza people that don't have the One yet. They're, it looks uh, like they're but that's really a smart, missing That's out. kind of a smart move by them and Microsoft. You know, I'm sure that they've got a deal or something where, you know, you know, one of the reasons that, uh, you know, this game's coming out is obviously, I mean, it's, it's right here in black and white. You've got features that straight up are available on the One, but not available on the 360. So the game itself, in a sense, is, uh, which is, I think, is a smart move on, uh, on turn 10. Uh, to try and get people to get a game, you know, give them a reason to, like, go get an Xbox One now, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, finally there's a game that's a, a license that we're familiar with, and here's what's completely different about it. Right. And I heard I heard on the One, too, it's, it's going to be a really community-based game where you can actually... Well, it has been, so I can't imagine them taking that away. So. Right, but I think that they're actually adding another degree to that. Um... That is unclear. Uh, I was just told this, but uh, without going to a lot of detail, they they're actually adding that and actually having car clubs and that sort of thing and um, do, doing that sort of stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. I love that. I love community aspects of games. Funny guy. I don't know about you, but that's why I like. That's what I like about Call of Duty, and that's what I like about now Destiny. It's very community based, and that just adds to you, the experience of the game. That, I mean, for goodness sake, that's how me and you met. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. A, no, I think it's a good thing. It's. Uh, I've played the older Forzas and was very into making cars and uh, had a lot of friends and always had people to race with and stuff. Had a lot of friends. You don't have any friends anymore. Well, no, I do. I just don't play Forza with them anymore. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure this will be probably one of the first few games I bought. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if they they have some sort of like. He's like, Chieftain gets a Prius. And I had them race with a Prius. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say, Priuses are good cars, don't get me wrong, but not for racing, you know? <laughs> no, but not, uh, I've had a few, few of those challenges. Yeah. I wonder if there's a drag race mode in the new Forza. I don't know, we'll find out when I get one. Yeah, anyway. we gotta ask, we gotta ask uh, Zombie Killer about that. Can you pick up chicks? No, you can't do that. You Why not? The car to Burger King. It's not the whole car experience. So uh, one of the causes that we like to promote here on Lagging Out, which, by the way, you are watching on YouTube, Google Hangouts, and Twitch, causes that we like to support. We're not just uh, selfish bastards about ourselves. I guess I'll just read it. It's uh, the Lagging Out Breast Cancer uh, promotion. Uh, we are benefiting the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Donations are ten dollars. That gets you a Lagging Out button. While supplies last, and to contribute, just go out to Lagging Out's Facebook page at facebook.com slash Lagging Out. Click the banner and donate. It's that easy. Tell your friends to donate today, and then when you do, use the hashtag one, the number one up, the number four, boobies, B-O-O-B-I-E-S dot com, and support breast cancer because this month it is uh, National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So. Yeah, and we're almost at our goal already. Um, we need about three hundred sixty-five dollars to hit our five hundred dollar goal, and we actually have a little tag campaign too, funny guy, um, which I forgot to put in there, but I can explain it real quick. We have a little image of a, the, the mushroom one up from Super Mario. We made it pink, and it's one up for boobies. The challenge is you get four, you get three of your friends to actually post that image as their profile pic. Or donate one dollar to the National Breast uh, Lagging Out Breast Cancer that benefits National Breast Cancer Foundation. You have 24 hours to do that, or donate a dollar to our foundation, and then challenge uh, three of your friends. All right, one of our sponsors and uh, cohorts in this whole thing we call the Lagging Out Network, 
Revolver Gaming, a clan that succeeds at being strong and unique among the thousands of clans of mundane and weak. Check out Revolver Gaming on their YouTube or Twitch TV, <coughs> Revolver Space GN United Today. And if you like our show, folks, check out Nerd Realm. They have their own playlist on our page. It's a very funny show. Uh, only on the Lagging Out Network, for that matter. So on our off week, they're on, and then we do a show, and then they do a show. It's really cool. They're the only radio show that broadcasts from the bowels of TARDIS, and only the right people are going to understand that. Check them out on our YouTube channel. That's Facebook. Uh, YouTube.com slash Lagging Out, and uh, check out their playlist. Very good show, very funny guys. They have they have a Doctor Who uh, thing going on or next, their next show and talking about Gotham, so I would stick around and watch that. And um, yeah, a new I haven't watched it yet. I wouldn't mind actually sitting in on that. I, I just haven't watched Gotham yet. I really do want to see that show. So. Yeah, it's really good. And also, they have a new co-host. Uh, you know who their new co-host is? Lily Raven. So oh. she's gonna be she's gonna be a permanent uh, fixture on there, uh, doing double duty here and there, of course. Uh, but mostly on the nerd realm, so check her out on there as well. Very exciting to hear that. They they get along really well. It's kind of scary. So <laughs> and be sure to check out the Xbox Players. Uh, that's Xbox B A W S Players. Uh, it's a multi-platform community uh, run by the one and only Blue Polar. Those of you out there in the gaming world know who we're talking about. Uh, even though it says Xbox Boss Players, they do welcome all gamers on all platforms. Uh, be sure to check out their group today on Facebook at Xbox 360 Boss Players Group. They actually have a, a GTA group, that a GTA clan, and a Destiny oh, clan, yeah. so check them out too. GTA group. I wanna, one day when I get Destiny, I'll probably join that. Too. Right. You just, just message them, and they... they they have a lot of challenges every day. They have like King of the Hill and GTA and stuff like that, and Last Man Standing, I think they call it. So you want to want to check them out too. Uh, the show came on as Moab was kind of touching base on a game that he got, but he doesn't feel comfortable talking about it. But I'm putting them on the spot <laughs> anyway. Um, he guys. just he just got Lord of the Rings: Shadows of Mordor. I and saw a commercial for it. It looks cool. It's it not... looks amazing. But I have a rule about movie-based games. I don't play them, but this one must be really good. So it's not, it's not a movie-based game. It's Middle Earth: Shadows of Mordor. It's set yeah. in the Lord of the Rings kind of universe, you know. But it takes place after the movie The Hobbit and before the actual Lord of the Rings. So it's kind of in between. So they're doing their own thing, and uh, basically, what it is, you're a ranger of of Gondor, and you actually are. All, Stationed at the Black Gates of Mordor when Salmon, Sa I can't say his name correctly, <laughs> comes back. <laughs> you know, his Urukai come back and slaughter everybody. Actually, everyone who's watching me on Twitch, I twitched the whole the whole thing. The only thing that makes this game really unique uh, is that it's got the mounting and climbing system of an Assassin's Creed game. So you can pretty much climb anything you see, run on it. You're doing all that parkour unique stuff, and then the combat system is just like the Batman Arkham series, because it's actually... Alright, <laughs> 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 I, I, I got this. This is funny, what he's doing right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, putting, I'm putting him on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you moved out of your frame. Well, it's supposed to follow me, but... It's not doing it. Did somebody say a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> I you forgot. I will, I will, I will wizard up. for you. <laughs> You're either going to piss a lot of people off or make one person watching us laugh. You shall <laughs> not finish this story. <laughs> Boom. I am putting a spell on you. Putting me to sleep is what you're doing. No. <laughs> Good old heckler comment. <laughs> That's supposed to be a wizard. <laughs> it's supposed to be a wizard. Your beard's going to be longer. Don't you know I know that? it's a birthday. Well, but they don't have longer beards. Check it out. <laughs> now now I'm a wizard on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's all improv. I'm going to ignore you. Anyway... The one unique thing about this game is it's got something called the Nemesis system, which is every named and they call them named enemy. Yes. <laughs> He's still doing it in the corner. Anyway. I am the king and I'm telling no. the 
The wizard now there's quiet. A cake. No, now, no, there's no. Cake. now there's a cake. Now there is not. <laughs> I'm a wizard. <laughs> Ta da! I'm trying uh, to get the sound effect there. <laughs> I'm never, I, I'll never finish the story, so go ahead, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> to uh, take from this new system called, they call it the Nemesis system. What it is is every enemy you fight remembers you in your actions during a fight and kind of adapts to what you're doing. So basically, if you tried to stealth kill somebody and you failed and you meet him again later, he remembers you did that and he'll be even harder to stealth kill and you actually got to fight him head on. Um, other than that, little actions you do, uh, they have a little system called a branding which you can pretty much use the power of a wraith that's inside of you to bring any enemy to your side in the middle of a fight. So basically all you do, you can do that to the creatures and they have the caragors, which are the cat-like creatures that they can pretty much jump ten stories, I don't know, they jump ridiculously high up cliffs and shit. And and all named enemies have fears and weaknesses and strengths and I, since I'm max level right now, I really can't move up in the world, all the enemies are super hard and I die almost every fight so it almost makes the game not fun and it needs a little updating. Every general I run into is immune to melee, immune to range, immune to stealth. So what, how the heck am I going to kill him? This is my only three options to kill somebody. <laughs> no. There was a wizard here a couple minutes ago that might have been able to help you, but I don't yeah, know. What that does <laughs> There's nothing I can do to give the nemesis system justice. I can explain it all I can, but my best... No, best I, I think you're pretty clear. I, can you imagine <laughs> how harder games would be if every game did that? If Destiny did that, or WoW would do that? There would be no way to beat anything because it's already hard enough. As you play, you play different levels of difficulty, and it would just add to the levels of difficulty. Would you like to know about the lagging out giveaway? Yes, I would. Can you please tell us, Mr. Wizard? Oh, gosh. Wait, see, look as at that hat. My, as soon as my hat and my beard come to me, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is driving me crazy. All right. How do you win the lagging out giveaway? Well, here's what you do. you got to watch our show live and or watch the replay and wait for the trivia question to pop up on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash lagging out. If you're the first person to answer the question correctly, you get entered into a chance to win the lagging out loot giveaway, which is brought to you by Gamer Insight, Narrate, and Gamer Gloves. Now, what's in the lagging out loot giveaway? Here's just a couple of things. Uh, Game Informer, uh, February's issue of Game Informer, signed by the uh, entire production staff at Turtle Rock Studios uh, from Evolve. Uh, a pair of gamer gloves, an Xbox Live card for forty nine ninety nine, water bottles, iPad covers, T shirts. It's probably worth about five hundred or more dollars. So be sure to watch our Facebook page for the trivia question uh, for this week. Now, last week's trivia question was: What video game was host to the first known Easter egg? A hidden surprise. Which, if we have to tell you what an Easter egg is, probably shouldn't even be playing games. Was it A, Campaign 84 by Coleco, B, Adventure by Atari, C, UFO by Odyssey, or D, Gorf by Atari? And there was a bonus. You got a second entry if you could tell us what the Easter egg was. Since you know more about the winner than I do, I'll let you take it away. All right. Um, the winner of this week's uh, trivia question was Lethal Migraine. He was the first to answer the question directly on our Facebook page. So and did he know, did he know what the Easter egg was? He did not know, so only gets one entry. And I don't think anyone knew. Do you know? No. I was hoping somebody would come down. You're so me. prepared. You're I so didn't prepared. Want to, I didn't want to cheat. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't want, want to cheat. cheat. You're the, you, you well, were the guy. I'll go on Google and find out tomorrow. <laughs> you, tomorrow. That helps us now. Just saying. <laughs> you were the guy who got in late and asked But we'll crash. I forgot that was what the question was, but I'll I'll, I'll find out. Let's do that I'll make age. that my mission. My rant and that I don't make. I'll make that my mission. Yeah, it's old age. <laughs> From the wizard. The wizard's getting old. I mean, what? The wizard was what? <laughs> Number one. Yeah, it's my magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> so this week's trivia question and the final one of the season. Pac-Man was designed by Toru. Iwatani to appeal to women because according to him, A. Both were always eating. Both were always eating. B. Both were both. always speaking. 
C, both were always chasing him, or D, both liked the color purple. Not the movie. I don't think that I don't think that movie was out when Pac Man came out. <laughs> it might have been eighties. Did it come out uh, right? Like Oprah. I don't know. I don't um, know. But those can be very offensive, those answers. <laughs> It's anyway, taken the wrong way, I guess. Yeah, I like they're, they're completely not. These are actually, honest to goodness, like questions I've actually pulled from. And, and one of these, one of those is true. One of those is the correct answer, believe it or not. Yeah, and I don't... Believe I don't, it or not. So. Believe it or not. So Lethal, he doesn't get an extra entry, but he went on and then pasted me in the chat here what the actual Easter egg was. Oh, what was ah. it? It was... Uh, it was... Basically, it was the program main programmer's name hidden in the game, so that's basically all it was. But it's still an Easter egg. Oh, okay. Because actually, in Halo Three, there's an Easter egg to where you can only get it in one day, and that was on the day of one of the game creators' wife's birthday, and you actually had to sit the menu for so long, and it actually was not found till like I think six, seven years later after it was released. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. I remember one in a Call of Duty. There was a creepy baby room. Oh, yeah. That was in uh, World of War, I think. Was it really? I think so. How come you never told me that before? I didn't ever take you there. It no, in, uh, you never did. It's in single I'm player. I'm now. It's in single player. What the player. hell? It's in single player, though. It's not multiplayer. Yeah, but you still never freaking told me, dude. I've known you like almost 10 years. You never told me that? I don't know if you it was World of War or Modern Warfare. Oh. One of the Call of Duties has a creepy baby room. You go in and it's all creepy baby pictures on the wall. <laughs> That's all I got, man. That's all I got, tools. That's all we have. Oh, we have a lot of awkward... it has. That's all we got. That's the living of the podcast. I'd be sure to check out Moab on our Twitch channel during the week for his uh, weekly drunk casts that he, he plays a bunch of video games um, on there. We actually advertise that on our Facebook page and Twitter, so check us out there. Yeah, you can yeah. find me on Battlefield and uh, Age of Empires. And Age of Empires. On Steam. Look for me. Same screen name everywhere I go, kids. Funny guy. He's and, you funny, can watch, funny. and I'll be on funny. Destiny, Chief in Space XI. And on behalf of Zombie Killer, Funny Guy, Moa Beatty, and myself, we would thank, like to thank you for watching the show. And until next time, this is Chief in signing off and lagging out. Game over, bitches. Like me out.